Felina has spent a lifetime raising her own plants, a lifetime harvesting her own seeds, watching and caring for them through the unfolding season. Over the years, she has grown her garden, raised her family, and seen them in turn begin to raise their own. A witness to the timeless cycle of nature. Life, death, rebirth. Tolina has seen them all. Recently, she received a letter with some exciting news from her granddaughter, Rosie, who lives far away, across the seas, in a foreign land. And one evening, she sat down to write a reply. This is what she wrote. My dear child, how happy we all are. You're going to have a baby. And to think that it seems like only yesterday you were a baby yourself. And oh, such a naughty one too. Always getting in my way in the garden and asking me so many questions. What a pest you could be. <laughs> oh, Coco. And now, here you are at it again. With questions, questions, questions about my nursery and how do I harvest? How do I store? How do I plant my seeds? How do I do this? How do I do that? You naughty girl, you're trying to steal all my secrets. Oh well, I suppose I'd better tell you, and I could never say no to you, could I? But Rosie, listen carefully, girl, and pay attention, you hear? I'm an old woman now, and I want to be sure you use what I tell you wisely, and I want to be sure you use it well. Felina has always liked to produce her own seed and plants. Apart from saving her time and money, she can be sure for herself of the quality of her produce. Less tiring trips into town to buy, less dependency all round. But to keep up a supply of plants, Felina has to plan carefully. What she needs to plant, when she's going to plant, and where she's going to plant. W, W, W. Where, part, when. She has set up her nursery so everything is close at hand. The water, her different soil mixes, seeds, tools, materials for planting into, and labeling. A key secret to my success, little mother-to-be, is the medium I plant into. This is made up of a combination of my compost, soil and sand, which I keep in separate piles. I mix them in a ratio of two parts soil, two parts compost and one part sand, so it drains freely. Two parts soil, two part combos and one part sand. When I have filled my containers, firstly, I moisten this mixture with my water rose I made out of a plastic bottle, which has a very fine spray. Then I scatter my small seed as evenly as possible. Having covered the seeds with a fine layer of her soil mixer, taps the container to let the content settle and makes sure she labels it. Then she puts it in the shade. Some seeds, Rosie, like tomato, cabbage, broccoli, lettuce, onion, spinach, green pepper. Yes, onions, spinach, green pepper, parsley, celery, chilies. All these require more shade and care. 
just like you did when you were a baby. Once they have germinated and at least four true leaves have appeared, seedlings like first to be transplanted into a larger container. First, Felina waters the seedling to make sure the soil stays around the root. Then lifting them carefully by the leaves, the leaves, not the stem, she pricks them out, always taking care to keep as much soil around the root as possible. You know, Rosie, our seedlings are a bit like children. You can't just let them out of the nursery and send them into the world until they're ready. You have to toughen them up, make sure they can walk before you let them run. For the vulnerable seedlings, Felina takes them out from the nursery for a couple of days. You know, to let them get used to it. They are still protected, but less shaded. Then, when they are 8 to 15 centimeters, about the size of a pencil, she puts them into their final position in the garden. Others, however, like lettuce or parsley, don't need so much protection. And you can put them directly into the ground without transplanting them into bigger containers. And where is your garden, by the way? Do they have gardens in that big city you're in, Rosie? Anyway, some seeds, Rosie, you can plant directly into your garden, like carrot, potato, pumpkins, bean, pea, radish. Pumpkin, beans, peas, radish. Fennel, maize, sunflower, garlic can all go straight into the ground. Yes, seedlings are like our babies. So harden them off before you put them out in the garden. Don't shock them, because that could stunt their growth and affect their yield. So be kind and gentle. Put them out at the end of the day when it's cooler. Are you following me, Rosie? Are you paying attention? Over there in that country I know nothing about, waiting for your own baby to arrive. Oh, Coco. Taking cuttings from parent plants is another good way of multiplying your stock and works well with plants with woody stems like lavender or rosemary. Once you've selected your strongest plants, look for a healthy growth. Holding it firmly, cut it at an angle. Look, like this. Now make a hole in a soil mix. This time, only sand. Then in it goes. Firm it up and water it gently, but not too much. You don't want the cutting to rot. The good thing about cuttings, Rosie, is you know exactly what you're going to get just by looking at the parent plant. You are just about to be a parent too, Rosie. But we don't know exactly what's going to pop out of you, do we? Although I'm sure it will be someone very special. And full of questions, 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 just like you. But let's go back to seed. Seed is where everything begins, isn't it? That's the mystery, Rosie. I'm getting tired, my child. 
But let me tell you a little about how to save and store your seeds. Like with your cuttings, you need to select the very best plants to save from, based on taste, size, and drought resistance. But make sure you label them so that nobody else harvests them and eats them first. Different seeds need different treatment. Pods, for instance, are best left to dry on the plants to be harvested and shelled later. But others, like lettuce, for example, produce such tiny seeds. You need another technique. Take a large paper bag. Never use plastic. Cover the lettuce and tie it firmly round the stem. Then cut it. Turn the bag upside down and shake out the seeds, like so. Always make sure you harvest your seed on a hot, dry day. And make sure any seeds left to dry in the sun are brought in overnight so the dew doesn't rot them away. Some seeds need to be winnowed. Flax, for example. Others need to be sieved. But don't rub them too hard. Tomato seeds need to be squashed out of their skins and rinsed in a sieve. Then spread them out and dry them thoroughly. Collect together your glass bottles. Make sure they have good airtight lids and sterilize them in boiling water. Then dry them out in the sun whose UV rays will provide further sterilization, by the way. Put the seeds into jars together with a little wood ash. Then label them with name, origin, and date. Make sure you store them in a nice dry place, free from vermin. Every month, I shake my jars of seeds to make sure they don't go moldy. Just gently, Rosie. Don't be rough with them. Just once a month will do. And when it comes to selecting the seed and using it, pour it carefully into a jar of water. The good ones, the ones you can use, will sink to the bottom. And the infertile ones float on top. So those are the ones you throw away. And there you are. Now you know my secrets, don't you? Well, of course, they're not really secrets and never have been. We can all learn them for ourselves. I think that's enough, don't you? I'm tired. To think I'm going to be a great-grandmother. How ancient you make me feel, Rosie. And to think I was also just a little seedling once. To think we all were. What a beautiful mystery it all is. Good night, my child. My blessings and prayers for you and for your new life to come. Your loving Gogo. Don't worry, Gogo. I'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah.